Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So the GDP for this quarter is supposed to be down by a negative 2.1%. What does that mean? That means two quarters of consecutive negative growth, which also means that we are in a recession. And this is huge news because we were supposed to be climbing out of our COVID recession. And technically, we were supposed to stay out and have this great economic Brandon renaissance, but apparently it doesn't exist. Who could have guessed, right? Who could have guessed? But beyond that point, you look into this and you see the fact that Biden's approval rating is lower than ever before, that the economy is in complete shambles. Inflation, we're going to get new inflation numbers in a few days. I'm thinking it could be over 9% in terms of the consumer price index, but you look at uh, what people are actually buying like gas and all these other goods, food, etc. It's a lot higher than that. This is not even 9% inflation for a lot of people. For what a lot of people are buying, it's much, much higher and it's an absolute disgrace. So we are going to dive into this and what it means for 2022 and 2024. But first I have to tell you guys about my good friends over at Noble Gold. Now, with inflation at 8.6% and climbing, you're going to need some help to get back to financial safety. Call Noble Gold and their experts will share their knowledge of gold IRAs so you won't have to worry about a thing. And if you're quick, they're giving away an incredible 10th ounce American Eagle gold proof coin with every qualifying IRA or 401k rollover. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold. Call the team now at 877-646-5347 to find out more or visit Noble Gold Investments. Dot com. So the economy is likely in a recession. We were not anticipating growth this quarter at negative two. A lot of people were saying it would be about half that. And the first quarter, we saw a decline of 1.6%. That means we are in a contraction for those who need a little bit of an economics lesson refresher. But we are plummeting and plummeting in terms of our growth. And that is what is important. And we are contracting. That's that's the main point here. We are in a recession. The economy is in tatters. And when you have two quarters of consecutive contractions, that means that you are in a recession. It fits the legal definition, the technical, the textbook economic definition. We understand that. And it's only getting worse from here. Inflation, we were told it's transitory. We were going to climb out of it. Oh, the gas prices. Oh, that's nothing to do with the Biden administration. You know, he's going to fix this problem. And guess what? Look where we are now. Look at what's going on. And the instigation of the Russia-Ukrainian conflict has also you know, contributed to this as well. And Biden doesn't even want to drill oil on our home turf. That's definitely not going to bode well for inflation. But beyond that point, a lot of people are saying that we are going to have even more negative growth on the horizon. We could be in, this isn't even a recession at this point. We could be headed into a depression throughout 2023 for all we know, because this is out of control with what is going on in our country today. And you look further and you look further into it. We keep missing the mark. Under Trump, they would always underestimate him. They would say, okay, we're going to add 300,000 jobs this month. And then he ended up adding like 800,000 time and time again. If you paid attention to the news cycle, you would understand that he always beat the expectations. Biden, on the other hand, is somebody that is always falling short. He is always missing expectations. Brandon, the Brandon letdown, the Brandon tax is what I like to call inflation. This is the Brandon letdown. And you see this time and time again, and you look at what's going on with the fact that we don't have leadership and it's going to backfire against them in the midterms. It will. We are in a recession right now. This is not a recession that was caused by COVID. This is not a recession that was caused by evil Orange Blump, who has not been in the White House for over a year and a half now. No, this is a recession that has been completely overseen by Joe Biden and the Democrat trifecta in Washington. And when voters look at that and when they see what's actually going on, they're going to get up there and they're not going to be voting to reestablish that trifecta. They're not going to be voting to reward Biden. They're not going to be voting to reward the Democrats in Congress whatsoever. And this is true. Biden's approval rating is in the gutter. If you look at his approval rating right now, 
it is minus 19 and falling the Monmouth poll, which has not been very kind to Republicans. They have Biden at 36%. They have him down 23 points on the net. And this is all after the Dobbs v. Jackson decision. Biden's supposedly pushing back against that's going to make him more popular, according to these people. No, it's not. It apparently is not. People don't understand this, but we look at Biden's approval rating. Started off, everything was going so great for him. He was at 55%, and then he passed the uh, stimulus bill, and then he basically stayed stagnant. And then it kept going, and then he started to fall a little bit. They said, oh, he'll rebound. He'll be fine. We're having a blue wave. That never happened. And then Afghanistan took place. Then he really started to fall. Inflation started to ramp up. The gas prices started to get ridiculous. They said, oh, he'll recover. He'll fix it. He'll recover, even though he's underwater. Uh, that never happened. Then they said, oh, him passing that garbage pork-filled infrastructure bill where only 11% went to infrastructure would help him recover. Didn't happen. Happen. Uh, he kept falling. They said that the Russia-Ukraine conflict would help him. That didn't happen. He just kept falling, and, and he keeps falling and falling and falling. He had a little bit of a bump up here. He was at 42 in the polls. Wow, that was May 8th. Oh, wait, he just slid down like a water slide. He's going down here. Boom, 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 boom. Maybe he'll get a dead cat bounce day here and there where he goes up 0.2%. But uh, either way, he's down in the approval polls by close to 20 points. Uh, and he's probably down by even more than that when you take into account the fact that the election mafia does exist. The polls have a bias. They reach voters that typically are a little bit more left-leaning. I did a video on this probably about a couple of weeks ago, if you guys haven't seen that, but we kind of talk about how the polls are likely wrong again for the midterms, even though they still show Republicans up. But you also want to look at the fact that a lot of Americans believe that our country is on the wrong track here. That same Monmouth poll showed 10% of people believe that this country is on the right track. I don't know who's really in that 10%. I guess those are the people that still watch CNN or whatever. But either way, these polls under Trump were roughly around, you know, the 40s, in the 40s range or so. And you look deeper into this and you see Biden taking over. It was roughly, you know, 50 to 40 or so wrong track. And that completely has been turned on its head completely. Now, 76% of Americans believe this country is on the wrong track. I mean, you're looking at that and you're making a comparison. We never had that much of a comparison to this since the government shutdown that took place in 2013. But beyond that point, you would have to go all the way back to 2011 or so uh, and probably longer than that to actually see when you had a sustained period of time that was not just based off of a one-off event where you had this many people say that our country was on the wrong track. And this is true. And you could look further into this. Everything is in collapse right now. And when everything is in collapse, what do people blame? They blame leadership. And you see this right here looking at Biden's approval poll in Monmouth alone. Monmouth had Biden at 54% in January of 21 in terms of his approval rating. That is down to 36%. The disapproval rating went from 30% up to 58%. It's only going to get worse from here for Biden. He very well could be in the 60s disapproval rating by the midterms, which definitely is going to turn out a lot more voters to vote against him. A lot of people were saying that, oh, Dobbs v. Jackson would save the Democrats, but even so, Monmouth, in their poll, they have Republicans up at the generic ballot by two, which we know it's probably by a lot more than that, and then you compared it to the last poll from a couple of months ago before the decision came out, and that had Republicans and Democrats tied. So either way, uh, my prediction that it would be a wash remains intact, but you look at 2008, and this was a year where you had a recession, and Democrats capitalized on Bush's low approval rating and the recession, and they beat Republicans in the generic House vote by a total of 53% to 425 and a half. And that is very true. And obviously, Obama technically at the top of the ticket did a little bit worse than that compared to Democrats nationwide. But that's not really the takeaway here. The main takeaway from this is the basic fact that you had a recession and you had at the House level 
Republicans do very poorly because they were in power. And you look at it and who did people blame? They blamed Bush for it. And as a result, a lot of people now are going to sit back and they're going to blame Biden for the recession, which he is arguably even more directly responsible for than Bush was for 2008. And as a result, they are going to turn out in very high numbers against Biden's party in 2022. And in terms of 2024, if you look at the polls that we have seen so far for the 2024 election, Donald Trump is beating Joe Biden, not just in some swing states, but in the national popular vote by around three points in every single poll. He's beating Kamala Harris by six or seven points consistently, which would be an equivalent to a 2008 route that we saw when we saw Obama win the popular vote over McCain by around six to seven percentage points or so. You're seeing the same thing, but the inverse nationwide in 2022, because that is how badly Biden is screwing up. There are a lot of things that Biden will still try to, you know, throw on the table, throw at the wall, see if it sticks and they're not going to work. They'll try to hit Republicans for Dobbs. It's going to be a wash. They'll try to hit them for one six, and that's going to completely backfire because every time that they keep talking about it, they make total fools out of themselves. And if anything, Republicans gain voters the more and more they spend their messaging on one six. You look at uh, Terry McAuliffe in Virginia, you look at what is going to happen to Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania in the upcoming uh, governor's race this cycle. It will backfire spectacularly against the Democrats the more and more they try to sit back here and pull this stunt. It doesn't work. The voters are not listening to them. They don't care. And they're just turning people off every single time they open their mouth. And they do this because they can't defend their economic record. They can only gaslight the public on that so much. So they have to gaslight them on other things like my democracy, my one six, abortion. They'll talk about gun control. But even so, that's just going to embolden more evangelical Christians and gun owners to turn out to the polls to counter them just as much as it will energize their core base, which is shrinking by the day. And a lot of people care more about the fact that their bank accounts are in the negatives. They care more about the fact that they have to pay $20 for a steak. They care more about the fact that they have to pay $100 to fill up their tank than they care about law-abiding gun owners having guns. That's basically the truth. I mean, Democrats are going to waste all of their political ammunition on non-factors in terms of helping them. And it's going to set the Republicans at a very large advantage ahead of these midterms. And you're already seeing this in every single poll, every single approval poll for Joe Biden. In several polls, he's already at 60% disapproval. The more accurate polls like Trafalgar, those are the ones that have him at 60% disapproval. Even Monmouth has him at 59, Harvard 57, Rasmussen 58, Reuters 57. He's already in the high 50s of every single poll in terms of his disapproval rating. The only poll that doesn't is that NPR poll, which is garbage. And if he's minus 20 nationwide, that means in the swing states, he's going to be minus 30. That means Republicans are, you know, en route for a clean sweep of every Senate race in 2022. That means they are likely going to sweep a lot of these governorships and pick off states that a lot of people were not thinking about a couple of months ago, but now they are because this is getting bad and it's only going to get worse. And this is off of his dead cat bounce. He was actually like worse a couple of days ago when the, uh, when the new polls start coming in for the next polling cycle, he's going to be down in the twenties. And that's worse than Trump ever was in terms of his approval rating. And that doesn't even take into account the fact that the polls historically have had a Democrat bias and they have been biased against Trump in particular. So do keep that in mind. But the recession is bringing the red wave as we speak. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.